Morning. Morning. Is everyone awake still? <laughs> everyone got the breakfast? <laughs> um, <laughs> hey guys, my name is Jimmy, and uh, oh, there are the slides over there. I'll, I was looking for the slides over here. Oh, there it is. Um, my name is Jimmy, and I'm the CEO of Block Party, and uh, we are making the world's first blockchain-enabled gaming console. And I know that's a little bit of a mouthful. You know, blockchain is one of those things that people get really excited about, but there's also a ton of skepticism around this. And I think for, for me, when, when I look at this, I think blockchain is here to stay for the future. Um, and this is exciting because for Playtable, a lot of what we're doing requires the, the technology behind blockchain. And you know, if, I don't know if you guys have been familiarized or not, but just to give you a little overview, Playtable is a gaming console that actually interacts with physical objects like dice, cards, uh, figurines, um, just any object that you can actually peg with an RFID tag. And a big part of the, what we're working on is actually the platform, right? a powerful software platform that ties everything together. And uh, you know, a big, a little bit uh, of of what what was mentioned earlier was absolutely true. If you know, blockchain wasn't hard enough. We're doing hardware, we're doing software, we're doing content. But you know, over time, I want to kind of later on walk you through a little bit of how we're doing it, so that you can you know uh, really see how the vision can come to life. So first and foremost. I want to introduce myself a little bit, so I'm going to hit play. So my name is Jimmy again, and uh, I've been a gamer all my life. Um, ever since I was age 13, I was a little budding entrepreneur in gaming, right? I sold Pokemon cards. Um, and I remember going to all these Pokemon tournaments and, 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 you know, and winning all these tournaments uh, and getting the tournament pack, so to speak, and selling these, uh, uh, these game assets, so to speak, on, on eBay. Um, and in college, I, was, I had a six-month stint in, in playing pro StarCraft. Um, and over the course of my life, I've also been involved with many board game championships. So what you see over there is the uh, is the Catan World Championship. Unfortunately, I did not win that. But uh, you know, the the guys from uh, Catan were fortunate enough to, uh, or I was fortunate enough to, you know, get really close, uh, develop a really close relationship with the guys from Catan. Um, and that's really where a lot of my passion started. Right? It's it's really in gaming, um, and it's not just physical digital gaming. I think it's in general. You know, I just have have this kind of passion to, for, to, to play with people. And I think that's really what you know all of you guys are here about. So I'm not, you know, this talk isn't going to be too focused on, on blockchain and more about gaming because I think for really blockchain to work, you really need to make a lot of the, the blockchain aspects disappear, right? And the consumer just shouldn't be able to see a lot of that stuff. Um, so that's really what we're working on at Playtable. So initially, the idea for really Playtable started when I was playing Catan, and I was a part of this group of people who really like to customize Catan tiles. And this idea of customization, you know, we grew a community around it. There's, if you look on Etsy, there's a ton of Catan tiles. And, uh, and these Catan tiles anywhere, range anywhere from 3D printed to handmade. Um, and over time, that idea naturally evolved into having a screen. Um, and around that time, we were developing um, uh, our, our, our uh, the, the play table, Skylanders was also a huge hit, right? Like they, they grossed over a billion dollars in just one year and Infinity and Amoeba followed along. And so that's a big part of the core technology that we incorporated into the play table. Now if you look at the play table, it's, it's you know, the size is about a, the size of a 24 inch screen um, and it actually has over 70 antennas. So what that means is it can actually detect 70 different pieces at the same time. And so when it comes to RFID, I mean, this is something that, you know, I think even consumer electronics manufacturers didn't even know how to handle because they've never put more than two RFID antennas in a consumer electronics device. Um, and when it comes to really linking the RFID and the blockchain, a big part of what we worked on was we realized that, uh, you know, in order for blockchain or in order for RFID and our figures to work, blockchain was uh, was needed, right? And the reason why it's needed is because when it comes to a lot of the manufacturers and also a lot of the uh, licenses, the licensors that we talked to, um, they realized that they really needed a platform to, to build on top of. So, for instance, you know, a company like Disney, right? Uh, uh, if they have a toy. 
um, and, and we end up purchasing a toy, that's really where the transaction ends. They get a, a $1.20 royalty on a $12 toy. But with blockchain, and if you can track all the different purchases, now the, the actual physical piece extends into the digital world. So now they can make in-app purchases with the particular toy. They can sell additional themes, additional characters, and this idea of infinite customization, portability across multiple devices, multiple owners, and multiple games is really what blockchain enables in, in, in a platform like ours. Right now, so instead of collecting $1.20, they can actually collect $12 worth of royalty revenue. Right, That's a 10x improvement over what they currently have in their business model. And that's really what we think about as far as orienting ourselves you know, in, different, uh, um, in different industries. We're talking about a big toy industry worth $88 billion. That's 8.8 .8 billion toys that we can enable RFID technology, enable blockchain technology on. We're thinking about digital assets and the $100 billion gaming industry, right? And that's a big part of the ecosystem. We, we see ourselves connecting uh, different RFID figures, right? Different toys, different uh, video games, different uh, uh, manufacturers, and we, we really see them working all together, right? And a big part of the uh, the the process um, is actually in the heart, in the heart and the hardware, right? And that's really our earl the earliest prototype that we put together. You can see all that tape. Um, and that was about two and a half years ago. Um, you know, and, and that's really a big part of why, why hardware is so hard is because it's super slow. Um, one iteration in hardware takes six months you know, one year. Software, it takes maybe a week, maybe a weekend. Um, you know, and, and, and it also is very, very expensive. Uh, you know, to do one uh, revision of a hardware run, you're talking hundreds of thousands of dollars. Um, you know, and the process itself is painstakingly slow. You have to go, I have to go over to, to China all the time um, and, and talk to a ton, uh, you know, a ton of different manufacturers, right? And I think the, 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 the ultimate sort of nail in the coffin, so to speak, is really the software. Because software is one of those things that a lot of people don't get. You know, you talk to a lot of the third-party manufacturers, and they really don't get software. They really don't know how to run your software, integrate it. And so these challenges um, are layered on top of each other. So a big part of what we do, what we've done as far as strategy is we've limited Playtable to be just a software company. And you know, now you might be asking, well, what what actually is Gonna, what are we going to do with the hardware? So we're actually working with a ton of hardware, uh, consumer electronics har hardware brands. In fact, we're uh, actually about you know 30, 30 to 60 days from closing a pretty massive deal with a, with a very big consumer electronics brand to manufacture the play table under the name. So in, in a similar way, that's really how we think about approaching hardware is that we don't want to be in the hardware business. We want, we want to be in the business of scaling out software, scaling out uh, blockchain technologies in the back end to really get the ecosystem up and running. So that's a big core part of what we've been working on. And on top of that, uh, we actually ran a marketing test um, so, so yeah, we actually ran a marketing test about uh, about six months ago, and we got you know so we we, we got a bunch of uh, um, press from a bunch of tier one outlets. Um, we actually got uh, uh, um, quite a bit of pre-orders. We also got over a hundred thousand people on a wait list uh, with with over five hundred developers signed up, right? And that's a big part of the the excitement that we have going around and what we're working on. And it doesn't just stop there. You know, when we think about licenses, we have the licenses from the biggest publishers. Uh, you know, on the board game side, we have a company called Asmodee. I think they were speaking just uh, a couple of, or just yesterday. Um, they're, they're the biggest board game publisher uh, in, in the world, right? They have access to games like Catan, Ticket to Ride. Um, and so we have a lot of those relationships developed already. And on the video game side, we're working with a ton of AAA studios uh, to really think about pioneering uh, different games inside of you know this kind of digital and physical world. So there's a ton of kind of interest in something like this because ever since you know the Microsoft Surface was made about 10 years ago, right? Like as a little kid, I've always wanted one, but it was $10,000. And so with Playtable, that's a big part of what we're working on. We're making something like this accessible. Um, and you can kind of see a lot of a lot of the blockchain stuff that we're working on is, is just more on the on the back end, right? The consumer's not 
not really going to be able to experience some of that. Uh, you know, we're going to call it blockchain, but at the same time, to them, it's just another gaming device. Um, it's another. It's, it's it's something else that you know they come together, they play games on, they enjoy a good time, and that's really I think for 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 blockchain to be mainstream, that's really what we need to do. We need to really rethink and reorient ourselves into how the consumer has the relationship with 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 the technology. Um, and uh, let me see here. I have about five five to seven minutes left. Um, and so for us, you know, the question that we're always asking about is is what's next, right? And so for us, you know, we're we're going to be shipping the first batch, the alpha units of Playtable by the end of this year. And next year, we're partnering up with the, a consumer electronics brand, and we're scaling it out to hundreds of thousands of units. Uh, and over time, we hope to get a bunch of other different consumer electronics man manufacturers to scale it out to millions of units. Um, and a core part of that platform is really uh, uh, tied together by what we call you know the play network right and this kind of play network really attaches um, uh, different different physical objects to the software um, it's a currency that can you be used across multiple uh, different games and multiple different platforms so for us we're really rethinking um, about gaming and we really think we're really rethinking about blockchain at a very, at a hardware level and I think that's really what's required for the consumer to really understand and really adopt something like this is is you know it's not just the actual technology, but a compelling experience um, that they can interact with and they can really uh, hold on to. So um, that's pretty much the end of it. Um, and if you are interested in contacting me, my email is right up here. Um, and there's a ton of videos on our website that you can check out. So uh, with that, I'll open it up to questions. Thanks. Good. Thank you very much, Jimmy. So if you have any questions? Okay, we've got one for, from uh, Benny there, and then then over there. Can you just say who you are for people who maybe missed your talk? Hey, this. Hello, yeah, hi. Speak loudly. Hello, this is Benny here from uh, CryptoKitties. <laughs> we've been kind of exploring this space of like uh, toys, etc. But the biggest blocker for us, the reason why we haven't uh, dove into it, is that if you sell the digital version, you still hold the actual toy of that. Uh, Assets. So let's say that exclusive cat uh, that we sold for one hundred forty thousand dollars, and I mean that was a hardware wallet. But if that was like a plushie that had an mm -hmm. RFID, yep. uh, someone else would own the actual rights to the or to the to the cat digitally from the blockchain. But uh -huh. then the actual toy, someone else could be holding it, right? So yep. that's kind of been a, a huge blocker for us because mm -hmm. we haven't solved that completely. Yeah. Uh, I'm wondering what your thoughts are. So, so we are actually solving that same problem as well when it comes to tying digital assets to physical assets. And the way that we think about digital assets uh, and physical assets in particular is when it comes to you know toys like Skylanders, for instance. Uh, there's two different ways that people think about it. One is collectability, but on the other end, there's this aspect of gaming that we're incorporating it into the play table, right? So there's two different contexts in which people realize value. Um, and so for the collectability, I agree, 140. Thousand dollars is really hard to solve for uh, because then you're talking about authenticity and a variety of different things. So I think there's a bunch of other different authentication methods that you need to use, like an appraiser, for instance. I don't think that's I don't know if that's really you know an application that a blockchain can handle or it is equipped to handle today. But on the other side, if you're talking about a, a toy, you know that has a level 60 different experiences uh, and it's tied to Benny, right? That's something that that's a vision that we can actually realize today. Um, and that's really what we think about, right? If there is, um, there, if there is seven to eight billion different toys, and we can tie physical and digital assets together, we don't need to make them all valuable, right? The value, like we were saying earlier, is actually in the gameplay itself, right? Being able to trade these uh, characters, being able to uh, um, uh, play with them in particular, and that's really what we've done here in in a lot of the, in a lot of our games. Is we have this kind of fundamental layer where people can interact with and exchange and and save data to these characters, and that's really the first thing that we're working on um, beyond realizing the collectability value. Yes. Okay. There's, there's, wait, wait, there's this gentleman here. 
in the middle, if you can say uh, who you are and which company you're with. Hi, I'm uh, Bruce with Athernia, uh -huh. and I have a question about your hardware. Yeah. Um, do you have any plans to scale it up in size so I could play Warhammer 40K on it? <laughs> um, yes, yeah, so we, we are actually working with uh, uh, another consumer electronics brand to get a much bigger size. That's one of the first requests that we get. Uh, it, like about 20% of our audience requests a bigger size. <laughs> Good. Okay, and uh, last question I'll go with Shirley down the front. Me. Uh, this is Shirley of Doggy. I'm actually sort of a champion and advisor to Jimmy for a while. But anyway, congratulations on that. But uh, how is it actually tied with blockchain? Again, I didn't quite get it. That so, the figurines that can be interchangeable, can be RFID'd. Yeah. And how is blockchain? So, so a lot of the tracking happens at the RFID layer. So the RFID, RFID technology, uh, you know, uh, within one particular RFID tag, it can store maybe about one kilobyte of data. And within this one kilobyte of data, there's a public string that people can read. Um, and that's something that everybody can read, you know, with different RFID readers and different protocols. But on the other side, you have the, the private string, right? And that private string is something that's encrypted. And you can actually take that uh, encrypted string and you can uh, uh, add layers of, of blockchain on top of it. And so that's how we've been tying the different physical assets to the digital assets.